Welcome to chapter two of the NFP 101 course. This chapter is titled Key NFP Requirements. For NFP to be successful, several new requirements have to be met. And these requirements may be new or may be unfamiliar to service providers. So it's important to understand each of them and to also understand how they could be, these requirements could be met. The first one is implementing cloud-based network topologies. So a network service may uh, be on one cloud, it may span multiple clouds, and how to make those decisions is really the first topic. Next, a related point is each of, the, each of these different locations for different clouds are going to have different attributes. They're going to have different space, power, cooling, and even weight attributes, weight bearing attributes. Those have to be taken into account when deciding where to put network services. Performance is a very important point. Performance has sort of two aspects. One is, are we, is the system optimized for the right amount of performance? And if it is not, it can directly impact the business case for the network service. For example, if you need twice as many servers to uh, fulfill um, the same number of sort of subscriber count, then obviously your costs have gone up and maybe your business case doesn't work anymore. So the first point is to make sure that you are getting the performance you need from the underlying system, which now consists of industry standard servers with uh, a virtual network function. Second, <clears throat> you have to be able to measure that performance. Uh, now, previously in the physical network function world, all of these issues would be taken care of by the vendor. The vendor would provide one single box. It would have hardware, software, everything. The performance would be guaranteed. Um, in this world, A, because of disaggregation, that's no longer, that guarantee is no longer there. And B, some of the burden of performance measurement may move from the vendor to the service provider. Security is another concern. When we move to a world of cloud technologies, virtual network functions, orchestration, dynamic environments, uh, open source software, where um, network services are being constructed with VNFs from different vendors dynamically and on the fly, a whole host of new security issues pop up. And these security issues have to be understood and addressed. License management. <clears throat> in the physical network function world, boxes were put into service for several years and license management could be a fairly static exercise. With VNFs, VNFs can be spun up and spun down in literally minutes. There may be tens of thousands of instances of this, these VNFs uh, in different network services. For that reason, license management becomes a lot more complicated. The definition of licenses, the monitoring of licenses, and the enforcement of licenses is a whole science by itself. Next, availability becomes a key requirement. In the physical network function world, the burden of availability typically was on hardware. So your server or your hardware had to have two power supplies, dual redundant fans, uh, two network connections going to different switches or so dual redundant paths and all kinds of um, hardware uh, redundancy and then techniques such as failover to ensure availability. In the NFP world, the burden of availability now moves to the application, <coughs> to the network service. The hardware is presumed to be unreliable. So things like reliability, resilience, fault management of network services is, is a key new requirement. For purposes of this presentation, we are going to look at the first three items. The next three items are advanced topics that are outside the scope of this course. So let's look at cloud topologies and its impact to network services. So here we see three types of clouds, and each type of clouds you can have multiple. So hence the 
the notion of distributed clouds. At the left hand side, you have access or edge clouds, where you have a head end or hub in a, a cable or fiber environment. You can have a point of presence in Wi Fi access or E node B for wireless users. And these clouds are highly constrained, very small um, edge, edge environments. Then you have core clouds or regional data centers. And then at the far right, you have hyperscale data centers or public clouds. The far left shows on-prem applications ranging from mobile, web, IoT, autonomous cars, gaming, tactile internet, augmented reality, virtual reality. And in some cases, these may be considered a cloud as well. For example, a virtual customer premise equipment may be a one node cloud where applications can be dynamically spun up and spun down. All of these different clouds have different attributes. So we are going to look at edge and access, core slash regional data center and hyper data center slash public clouds. We are not going to look at the on-prem, but based on these, you can easily extrapolate the attributes of on-prem as well. So we are going to look at a number of characteristics and rate them across these three environments. The first one is latency. Latency is dictated by speed of light and therefore it's largely a function of, of distance. It actually, there is another component. Processing time is also a component of latency, but for purposes of this discussion, we are going to ignore that. So an edge or access environment has the least, so it's, the, it's low the latency is the lowest. And at the right hand side, it's the highest with the uh, regional data center being something in the middle. Bandwidth, you get the maximum bandwidth on the edge and the least on the right hand side. Number of sites, edge locations are, are numerous and therefore there are lots of edge clouds. Core or regional data centers are less and then Hyperscale data centers or public clouds can often be just uh, a few, a handful. The cost of an managing the environment is the highest on the left-hand side. These are remote sites where someone has to physically drive and do the maintenance in highly constrained and difficult to work environments. On the right-hand side, you have these huge data center with operational staff on site. So it's lot less expensive to do any management or maintenance on the right. Space or power, on the left, it's the least um, space, power, cooling, real estate, and even weight bearing is the least on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, you can literally pack racks and racks worth of servers. The redundancy is of the uh, cloud redundancy is what we're talking about is the least on the left because you just have a lot fewer nodes and a lot fewer regions within those environments and on the right hand side you can have a lot lots and lots of racks lots and lots of nodes lots and lots of availability zones etc and something in the middle for a regional data center and storage costs similarly are the highest on the left medium in the middle and then lowest on the right hand side so now you can map the attributes of your application <clears throat> to the attributes provided by the cloud and make a dis decision on where to place them. In some cases, for example, if the application can tolerate high latency, low bandwidth, but needs to cost really uh, on the low end of the spectrum, then it needs to be on the right hand side in a hyperscale data center or a public cloud. If on the other hand, it requires very low latency, high amount of bandwidth, and customers are willing to pay for that application, then it should go on the edge. And in certain cases, an application may span these environments. For example, the performance sensitive part of a given application may be on the edge, and some of the more control path or management aspects of that same application may be in the core or in the hyperscale data center. Let's look at some concrete examples of what types of applications might be on what kind of environments. 
So let's talk about on-prem, edge, or access. So in terms of services, virtual CPE, caching, uh, video optimization, augmented reality, virtual reality, firewalls, they could all be on the edge or access. And in terms of access technologies, VC cap core for cable, VRAN for mobile, virtual OLT for fiber, and analytics, those types of applications can be on the edge. When we talk about <coughs> regional data centers or core clouds, services such as virtual IMS, IP multimedia system, virtual CDN, video on demand, uh, core services like virtual EPC, virtual provider edge, aggregate analytics that are aggregating analytics from multiple edge environments can be here. And then finally, hyperscale data center, things like virtual set-top box, mobile applications, live streaming, etc., cetera, um, can, be, can be in those locations. Next, let's look at performance. Commodity servers, by definition, are not optimized for packet processing, especially when you throw in things like security algorithms that need encryption, uh, hash functions, etc. Now, how do you measure performance? There are a variety of relevant metrics ranging from latency, throughput, packets per second, packet loss, and then delineation between single stream and multi stream performance. So, for some, for example, some systems may perform very well when you have multiple streams, you might get, you know, multiple tens of gigabits per second, but when you send it only one stream, the performance may be different. So that has to be taken into account. So these are some variety of ways we can measure, measure performance. Um, and as I mentioned, performance is critical because performance directly relates to the business case of a network service. So for that reason, the performance has to be optimized. There are a variety of hardware acceleration technologies that can be, that are, in fact, data plane acceleration technologies that can be hardware, partially hardware and software, and pure software. So those have to be used. And then performance measurement is another important field to measure what kind of performance you're getting in a real life production environment, uh, which then, determines the business case for the network service. So in conclusion, NFE presents operators with a number of new requirements, new challenges, and on the flip side, opportunities that they may not have had to encounter to this point. And by navigating skillfully, uh, service providers can realize the full benefit of NFE.